we start, of course, with the income statement. And we've spent most of our energy so far, when we talk about this financial analysis problem, we spend most of our energy talking about the income statement, which boils down to revenue and profits. But that is really only the beginning. It's the minimum level of understanding and uh, sense of how the organization is doing that you need. What we've talked about in the past is revenue and revenue growth. Revenue growth typically means growth rate. The trends in revenue and revenue growth rate. And then the profits in terms of the profit margin and the profitability and how that trend is going, whether your profits are improving or getting worse. So what that means is you typically don't learn anything from one year's numbers. You learn more when you look at two years or two quarters, two periods, one over the other, so you can see the growth rates. And you learn even more when you can look at three periods that are, that you, so you can compare how the trend is in your growth rates or in your operating or profit performance. That's generally what you're looking at. That's what we've talked about to date. What we're going to go into a little bit tonight is how we can take it a step further and drill down a little bit further to understand how our financial models and how the financial numbers can really help us get a better sense of where some risks might be in the organization and how we might improve performance of the organization. Let's start with the top line revenue, top line revenue issues. We look at growth, we look at market share. We've talked about those things before. What does the revenue growth tell us? Well, there's two underlying drivers in revenue growth. One of them is how many units you're actually selling. If you are, for example, an automobile company like Toyota, you have vehicles that you're selling, cars, automobiles. You're selling a certain number of each model of car. You're selling so many Camrys, so many Avalons, so many trucks. You're selling units. That helps, that is one of the drivers that tells you how well your firm is doing in terms of how much product is going out the door. But that's not the complete story of revenue. The other part of revenue, of course, is your pricing and how well your pricing is being supported. Are your prices as strong, as high, strong means basically high, as you hope for and you plan for? Because one of the things that can happen when you're trying to get your revenue targets of, say, $10 billion in a quarter of sales, one of the things you might do is push more unit sales by lowering your prices so that that can help you meet your revenue number, even though there might be some additional risk because you're lowering the price, you're providing lower pricing. So you want to understand both how well your pricing is doing is your price supported? A good, strong, strategic position in your market where you have quality advantage, you have some other resource advantage or competitive advantage, should allow you to sustain higher price while you're also selling a lot of units or the units in the plan. You plan units, you might have to reduce pricing to meet your unit, your unit pricing. Or if you're planning revenue, you might increase your units by reducing pricing. Those dynamics could have a significant effect on the business. So when we look at revenue, the first thing you do is look at the revenue and the revenue growth as we've talked about. However, underneath that, you want to understand the dynamics of that number. Now this can be looking at, if you're Toyota, you might want to look at cars and trucks and maybe some heavy equipment or some other products or services that they offer. So you can break this down into various levels as you start to understand how well this firm is strategically positioned within the marketplace. How do you start to identify where there might be issues? Okay. Before I go there, just to point out that recently the automobile industry has been announcing its results. Uh, Ford and, uh, and Chrysler have had record-breaking results with higher sales and strong margins. Um, other firms, including Toyota and General Motors, are performing reasonably well, but are not necessarily breaking through their, their prior records. Other firms aren't. 
that tells you that there's a, a shift in the strategic positioning within that marketplace, potentially. Potentially. So that's what you want to look for.